Welcome to the very first episode of the Sustainable Web3 Ecosystem Series, a collection of videos designed to help you clearly understand the blockchain technology and protocols that will drive success in the economies of the future. My name is Marconi White, host of Exchanging Good. This series is brought to you by Jarvis Labs, the blockchain metric software solutions and token research firm. And in a minute, Rishi, a Jarvis Lab analyst, will present the very first topic in the series, Constant Product Automated Market Makers, or AMMs. Yes, it's a mouthful, but Rishi makes it easy and fun to understand, I promise. But before we get into the details, allow me to set the scene. We view blockchains as economies, and the ability to exchange goods and services is an essential function for any economy. Historically, trading tokens has required centralized exchanges, institutions that cater to this emerging asset class, but bring with them the risks and inefficiencies of the legacy era. Early investors uncovered these risks. In 2014, Mt. Gox imploded after years of undetected theft left the trading platform insolvent. And in 2022, the industry experienced the FTX implosion, a historic downfall of biblical proportions for firms destined to take over the industry. But Web3 networks and economies give us the ability to realize true decentralized exchanges, protocols that materially transform risk management and process efficiency for trading and exchanging. These financial primitives already sparked a major turning point for decentralized finance in 2020. And in the great bear market of 2022, they were responsible for over $1 trillion in trade volume. Best yet, the AMMs continue to innovate with the potential impact on blockchain economies just beginning to be understood. Okay, so with that, the scene is set. It's time to get into the details. Let's head over to hear what Rishi has to say. Decentralized exchanges, or DEXs for short, are a key building block when it comes to swapping between two assets on the blockchain. It has been iterated over the years and helped spark a major turning point for decentralized finance, or DeFi for short. This spark was lit with the introduction of the AMM, or the Automated Market Maker. It's a solution for allowing one user to swap assets without needing a traditional counterparty. These solutions see volume as high as 10 billion per day. They are an integral part of the ecosystem. And today, let's dive into just how they work. This is Jarvis Labs, a hub for token research, focused on helping design or improve your project to reach its true potential. My name is Rishi, and I'll be your guide today as we dive into another episode of Sustainable Web3 Ecosystems. Okay, welcome to today's presentation, AMMs. To get started, let's look at this image right here. I know, exciting, right? It may not look like much, but what you see here is the basis of the mechanisms that govern many DeFi protocols, such as Uniswap, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, and more. This one in particular is called a Constant Product AMM. It's made famous by Uniswap's V2 design in particular. It is a major change to traditional order book designs that include putting a bid or an ask price when switching between currencies. The AMM changes its model and makes swapping assets simple as it relies upon a pool of assets already available. What's more is that anyone can contribute to the liquidity of this pool and be rewarded for doing so. This created a way for users to put their tokens to work. This ability to take part in providing liquidity was in part a major factor for the rapid growth of DeFi in 2020. To unpack this some more, let's get into how when AMM works. The constant product AMM is based on the formula X times Y equals decay. X and Y represent the number of tokens of two different assets in the pool. Combined, they create K. To put it simply, if you have 50 tokens of one asset, 150 tokens of another asset, this K value is the product of the two, or 7,500. A constant product, see where the name comes from, means this K value does not change no matter the trade. Let's dig a bit deeper to understand this better. Here's a Desmos chart, courtesy of Dan Robinson from Paradigm. Desmos is a graphing software that helps us visualize this constant product equation. The graph is taking in the starting amounts of both token X and Y, and using these values to help us calculate the execution price. 
let's take a look at the quick example to help us understand a bit better. The pool of interest has 50x tokens, 200y tokens. As you can see here, at this starting point. Now, I look to swap 150x tokens. The pool has 50x tokens, so when I swap in my 150 into the AMM, it now holds 200. But how much Y tokens do I get in return? How many Y tokens must be removed to keep K the same as before? Let's figure it out. To start, let's rearrange the equation and add in a new batch of tokens. So Y equals to K divided by X of the tokens before plus X of the tokens added. This gives us 10,000 divided by 150 plus 50. This means Y equals to 50. This is the number of tokens that must remain at the end of the trade. So all we have to do is do 200 minus 50 and we get 150. Meaning as a user, we have just traded in 150 tokens. Hopefully that was simple enough as we're going to introduce you to some software called Machinations, where you don't need to do this hundreds of times to figure out what a pool might look like by the end of the day. Instead, we can run some simulations to make the most of the AMM DeFi primitive for your project. Here's that same AMM from Desmos, but this time within Machinations. We went ahead and simplified it a little by removing fees and liquidity provider returns, since those vary from pool to pool and for our purposes here, it, okay, so let's get to our example. Here. Here we have two bold circles. These are called resource pools and they contain our tokens X and Y. Uh, the line dashed between the pool and the square in the middle is a state connection. These pass on the state to the center square. The center square here is called a register. This means so far we have two resources, pools, at the edges sharing their current state to the register in the middle. This register is where we implement our equation token times crypto or x times y equals to the constant k. From here we can create what are called resource connections here and here and let tokens flow in and out through our economy into different areas or components. Okay, so to better understand this next part, let's say we want to swap 1000 tokens. This means we are adding 1000 tokens to our token pool right here into our AMM. And we want to see how much the AMM will return to us in crypto. Now, off to the left right here, we can showcase how many tokens are to be sold or bought. In this area to the left, I can input how many tokens I wish to sell and relay this number via a state connection highlighted here all the way to this predominantly green function over here. This function feeds tokens into our resource pool, which calculates how much crypto should be removed and exchanged. So let's load a thousand tokens, up, shall we? 1000 tokens have been loaded. Their value has been passed over through the state exchange. And as you can see here in one step in this formula here, I've calculated 990 tokens must be removed from this crypto pool and given to us. This is to ensure the K factor has to remain constant at 10 billion. So let's iterate it over, shall we? Next step, and 1000 tokens have been added, as you can see here, and 990 tokens have been removed in crypto pool and given to us, the trader. What's important here is that this was one single step or one transaction per se. Hundreds of transactions are likely to happen in a successful pool per day, maybe thousands, which means you likely don't want to manually input these values and click next each time. That's where historical and 
are like to do to create very powerful models. That's exactly what we will touch on next time by leaning on Panda, our on-chain data provider and research platform. That's been your Web3 Atlas. See you next time.